Are you fascinated by the world of data and eager to dive into the exciting field of data science? Imagine yourself uncovering hidden patterns, making data-driven decisions and solving the real-world problems with your analytical skills. The role of a data scientist is both challenging and rewarding, offering a blend of intellectual simulations and impactful results. But the demand for skilled data scientists is skyrocketing in 2024 and now is the perfect time for you to start your journey into this dynamic field. So let us explore the path to become a data scientist step by step and discover how you can build a successful and fulfilling career into this domain. Craving a career upgrade? Subscribe, like, and comment below. Dive into the link in the description to fast track your ambitions. Whether you're making a switch or aiming higher, Simply Learn has your back. Just a quick info, guys. Simply Learn has got a postgraduate program in data science in collaboration with Caltech CTME and IBM. This program teaches you skill tools including Python, ML, Tableau, Generative AI, ChatGPT, and many more. This program also includes master classes by Caltech instructors and IBM experts. So hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. Now let's get started. So let's first start with understanding the basics. So what exactly is data science? Think of it as the art and science of extracting useful information from the data. It is a mix of various fields like computer science, statistics, and domain-specific knowledge. Data science helps organizations make better decisions, predict future trends, and improve their operations. A data scientist is like a detective who uses and uncover hidden patterns and insight. They have to know programming, understand statistics, and have a good domain knowledge. Now, basically statistics and probability are your best friends here. You will need to understand concepts like mean, median, mode, variance, standard deviations, and probability distributions. These are the building blocks of data analysis. Now, next process is learning a language. Now, what programming language you're going to choose? So I'll refer you to take on Python. Python is a great choice because of its simplicity and vast number of its library available for data science. Start with basics like variables, data types, control structures like if and else loops and functions. Once you are comfortable in Python, dive into Python libraries like NumPy, Pandas and Matplotlib. Now let us discuss each of these libraries one by one. So basically, first one is NumPy. Now, NumPy's primary object is the homogeneous multidimensional array, an array that can be indexed, sliced, and iterated over similarly to lists in Python, but with much greater efficiency. You are going to get vectorized operations. NumPy is going to allow you for element-wise operations and broadcasting, which makes code more concise and faster compared to Python loops. Now, the third one is mathematical functions. It also provides a wide array of mathematical functions like linear algebra operations, random number generation, and Fourier transforms. Next one we have is Pandas. Now we all know that Pandas is a powerful library for data manipulation and analysis. It introduces two primary data structures, series and data frame, which are built on top of NumPy. If we talk about series, series is a one-dimensional labeled array capable of holding any data type. Next one, we have data frame, a two-dimensional labeled data structure with columns of potentially different types, similar to a table in database or an Excel spreadsheet. You can also do data manipulation. Pandas provide functions to handle missing data for filtering data, merge or join data sets, and perform group operations like aggregation, transformation. And finally, we have Matplotlib. Now, Matplotlib is a powerful plotting library in Python which is used for creating static and animated and also interactive visualizations. It is highly customizable and integrates well with other libraries such as NumPy and Pandas. The key features of this library are that it has versatile plotting functions. It creates a wide range of plots including line plots, scatter plots, bar charts, histograms, etc. Next one, it can be used for customizations. We can customize every aspect of a plot, such as titles, labels, legends, colors, and line style. So these were some of the benefits of using Matplotly. 
Now let us move on to the another programming language which you can also choose that is R. Now if you prefer R, it is also a powerful tool, especially in the academics world. So when you are starting out, learn the basics of R and explore libraries like DPLYR for data manipulation, ggplot2 for data visualization and TIDYR. Now next, let us focus on what are the mathematics that is needed for data science. So we all know that mathematics is a foundation of data science. You don't need to be a math genius, but understanding some key concepts will be very helpful. The first one we are going to choose that is linear algebra. Learn about vectors, matrices and their operations. This is crucial for understanding how data is manipulated in algorithm. Next, you have to focus on calculus. Focus on differentiation and integration, partial derivatives and gradient descent. These concepts help in understanding how optimization algorithms work. Next one, we have statistics and probability. Get comfortable with descriptive statistics like mean, median and mode and also standard deviation. Probability distributions, hypothesis testing and inferential statistics. These will help you to make a sense of data and draw conclusion. Now let's start with the next part, that is mastering data manipulation and cleaning. Data is often messy, so learning how to clean and manipulate it is very, very essential. Use pandas in Python to read data from different sources like CSV files or databases. Clean the data by handling the missing values, removing duplicates and dealing with the outliers. Next one, you have to transform the data as needed and create a new features to improve your models. Now, after you have done this, you need to get hands-on with data visualization. Visualization is a key to understanding data and communicating your findings. Start with matplotlib and seaborn in Python to create basic plots like line bar and scatter plots. Customize your plots with titles, labels, and legends to make them more informative. If you are using R, then ggplot2 is your go-to-go -go library. It uses the grammar of graphics to create beautiful and complex visualizations with A's. Next one, you have to go for EDA, which stands for Exploratory Data Analysis. EDA is like a detective work. You have to explore the data to uncover patterns, spot anomalies, and check assumptions. Perform univariate and bivariate analysis, look at correlations, and create profiles of the data. This step helps you to understand data better and guides you to your next step. The next step we have is machine learning. Now is the time to get into the heart of data science, that is machine learning. Start with unsupervised learning, which includes regression, predicting continuous values, or classification, which means predicting discrete categories. Then explore unsupervised learning techniques like clustering, which means grouping similar data points, and dimensionality reduction, which means reducing the number of features while retaining important information. Learn how to evaluate models using metrics like accuracy, precision, recall, and F1 score. Cross-validation is also a technique to assess how well your model generalizes to unseen data. After this, you have completed, move on to deep learning. Now, we all know that deep learning is an advanced area of machine learning involving neural networks. Start with the basics of neural networks and then explore more complex architectures like CNN, which means conventional neural networks for image data and recurrent neural networks for sequential data. Popular frameworks like TensorFlow and PyTorch are great for implementing deep learning models. After you have completed this, move on to NLP. Now, NLP is all about teaching machines to understand and generate human language. Start with text pre-processing techniques like tokenization, stemming, and labomization. Then explore sentiment analysis, topic modeling, and word embeddings like word 2 vec and Globe to represent text data in numerical form. After this, you have done, go on to exploring big data technologies. Now, sometimes data is so large that traditional tools also cannot handle it. And that's where the big data technologies come in. Learn about Hadoop ecosystem and Apache Spark for big data processing. These tools help you work with massive data sets efficiently. And after that, learn about data science project lifecycle. A typical data science project follows a life cycle like this. The first phase is problem definition. Understand the problem you are trying to solve. The next step, you have to move to data collection. Gather the relevant data. Third step involves data cleaning, preparing the data for analysis. At the fourth stage, you have to build the model. You have to choose and implement the right models.
Fifth is the model evaluation. Assess the model performance. Sixth one is deployment. Put the model into production. So these are some of the steps which are involved in data science project lifecycle. Now, after you have done all this, now it's the time to apply what you have learned. So you have to do real world projects and case studies. Participate in competitions on platform like Kaggle, where you can tackle challenging problems and see how you stack up against others. Study successful data science case studies to understand how different techniques are applied in various industries. Now, I would also recommend you some of the additional resources that you can add on while you are on your journey to become a data scientist. So certain of the books like Python for Data Analysis by Wes McKinney is also recommended. Then Hands-On Machine Learning with Scikit-Learn, Keras and TensorFlow by Aurelien Giron. And finally, Deep Learning by Ian Goodflow and Joshua Beningo are a very, very good choice for learning. Now you can also go for online certification courses and also watch YouTube exhaustively to understand certain underlying concepts. So guys, that was all for today's video. I hope so. You would have enjoyed our today's video on how to start with data science. Till then, keep learning. And if you have any doubts, then comment on the comment box below. And our team of experts will revert you back on the same. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts. Choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.